Hello, everyone. Welcome to Analyzing Malicious PDF Files with Intiser. Uh, my name is Shannon McFarland, and today we're going to be doing a hands-on webinar to really look at the tools and techniques that can help you identify and analyze malicious these malicious PDF files. These phishing campaigns are one of the most popular methods using PDFs to really uh, get to the people they want to get to and get them to click on things they shouldn't. So I'm here today. Uh, my name is Shannon McFarland. I'm the head of product marketing. Um, Nicole, do you want to switch to the next slide there? Yes, yeah, sure. And I'm here with Nicole, my fabulous colleague and a security researcher who writes for a blog and does some amazing research uh, looking into threats that we're finding in the environment. Nicole, do you want to say a little bit more about uh, yourself and dig into the topic? Yes, so hi everybody. My name is Nicole Fishman. Um, I'm a security researcher at Intezer. Uh, I worked on different um, projects, including analyzing malicious office files, which was our previous webinar. And now we're presenting uh, the analyzing malicious video files. Great, and I'll be monitoring the chat. And if you have any questions that come up as Nicole's digging into the materials here, feel free to drop them into that chat and we'll answer them at the end. From here, we're gonna be looking at, you know, why do we need to inspect PDF files, the PDF format overview, the methods that are used by attackers to deliver malware using PDF files, some examples that Nicole has gathered for us with the tools and techniques in those, and then wrap it all up. Nicole, I'll, back to you. All right, so let's start. Um, okay, so first of all, you might wonder why are we talking about PDF files? Because they are, I would say, old. And come on, we know PDF files. But I did really a quick Googling and I found many attacks using PDF files. But what was interesting for me is that there was, weren't only attacks by some uh, script kiddies or unknown groups. There were uh, real APTs, advanced persistent threats or advanced groups that are sponsored by, na by nations or cyber espionage groups and so on. And what I found are groups like uh, Nobelium, which is uh, the group behind SolarWinds. They had a relatively new phishing campaign that uh, used the same ISO file uh, that deployed a PDF uh, file as a decoy file. Or for example, Muddy Water, which is a cyber espionage group that was recently linked to the Ministry of, In of Intelligence of Iran, and they attack North America, Asia, Europe. They target telecommunication uh, companies, governments, oil industry, airline industry, and they all they part of their um, chain of attack is using a PDF file with an embedded button that will fetch a form and then it will execute a dropper. So I hope I convinced you to stay with us on this webinar and understand, first of all, uh, what is a PDF format and uh, how attackers can use it and how we as defenders, as responders, can uh, identify these malicious files and what we can do to protect our organizations. All right, so PDF files where uh, the format was created by Adobe. Um, and one of the goals I would say was to create a file that you can open anywhere. It's a reliable way to open a file regardless of the operation system that you're using. And there are many PDF readers for each operation system. Some are based on a browser, uh, some based uh, or target a specific uh, machine. There are really many choices. And regarding the PDF file itself, so you know it can contain text, but it's much more than that. PDF files can contain lots of different information and graphic, like links, images, videos, and much more. And in general, the um, structure of the PDF file is a hierarchy. So it's like a tree. We have a root, and then we have other objects, children objects, and so on. And there are main, four main parts in the PDF file. The header, which provides some sort of a signature that identifies that, hey, this is a PDF file and not something else. We have the body, 
that's the part that contains all the information that we're going to talk about more. We have the cross-reference table. And lastly, at the bottom of the file, we have the trailer. So this is an example of a legitimate PDF file. It's not malicious. It just has, it says, hello world, and it's titled is hello world. And this is how it looks like if I would run the strings command, meaning I want to print only the printable characters. What we see here is the first of all, uh, here, it starts with PDF. Uh, every PDF file will start like that. Then we have the version. And right below that, we have the, our first object that tells us what this file is all about. So we know it's titled Hello World, as they promised. And here we have another very, very interesting um, thing. That's the producer. So the producer is very useful because it tells me uh, what software was used to create this PDF file. And in this case, indeed, I use the Google Docs. Um, but what we can um, do with that producer is that some uh, threat actors might use a very specific PDF uh, reader or PDF creator. And that's how we can identify these malicious files. So if you're a threat hunter or you want to look for suspicious PDF files, that's something that you might want to check. All right, so we talked about the header and moving to the next part, that's the body. The body of the PDF, that's the part that contains all of the information, both what we see and what we don't see. And I mentioned before objects. And basically, in PDF file, every thing, every piece of information is uh, inside an object. And besides that, objects can have different types. So for example, we have the streams. The stream is, I think we're going to look a lot of streams because they can contain different information like scripts and so on. And besides that, we have arrays, dictionaries, strings, and so on. Um, this session will be only one hour. So unfortunately, I can go um, and, uh, and explain each and every object. But the important part is, first of all, know how to identi identify each type and know what are the different types. And from then, I really encourage you to, to learn more. Um, what I want to, to mention is objects. So an object will start with the obj and end with the end obj keyword. And it will look like something like that. So the first number is the number of the object. It's, um, it's a unique number. Then we have a version. We're not going to discuss it further here about version of the object. And another very important thing is the reference. So as I mentioned, because um, PDF uh, files have different objects and the format is hierarchy. So one object can reference another one and so on. And to, it's very important to know how to read it. So here, for example, uh, it means that this object is reference references object number five. You will get used to it. So this is a, an example that's, uh, again, the hello world uh, file. And here we see, we're talking about object number 11. Here it starts over here. That's the end of the object. And here we have it uh, dictionary with the filter and flat decode. What is that? So just bear with me another second. Below that, we have the stream. Uh, the stream will start with a stream and end with the end stream and some blob. All right, so streams and information in PDF files can be compressed to save space. And for threat actors, it will help them because it makes the text less readable. And there are different ways to compress the, the file, or the, sorry, the stream. And uh, the dash filter tells me that um, this stream is going to be compressed and how. So that's why we see here some blob and not actual text. All right. The next part is the trailer. So when a PDF file is being read by the PDF reader, 
it will start from the bottom. It will go to the end of the file. It will read the last line. That's how it knows that that's the end of the PDF file. And then it will go one line above is the offset of the excerpt table. We'll talk about it in a minute. And above that, we have the trailer, which have a very significant and important information for the PDF reader. For example, how many objects there are in this file, where is the root object, and where is the information about this PDF file uh, that is used by the PDF reader to know how to uh, read and parse the PDF file. And one, and one line above, we have the XREF table. And this is very important once again for the PDF reader because this table tells the offset of each object in this PDF file. So that's how PDF reader can identify different objects without actually the need to read the whole PDF file. That's very useful, especially for very big PDF files as it can be very time consuming to read everything. All right, so we cover the PDF format. I hope you got some basic understanding about uh, the PDF files. But what we really need to, to understand now is how threat actors can use PDF files to deploy malware or start an attack. And first of all, in which attacks do we see the PDF files? I want to say phishing, but in my opinion, it might be too narrow because it's not only phishing, as you might think, like click on the button or uh, click on a link and so on. It's much more than that because PDF files are a way to get uh, initial foothold in the victim environment. It's a way to get to the victim, engage him with the file, make him do something. And that's how an attack would start. And this attack can be anything from credential stealing, banking information stealing, installing backdoors, setting persistence, and much more. So PDF files, they open the door for threat actors to basically do whatever they want. Because threat actors can create any PDF they want and maybe make something specific, like tailor it for the person, for the victim that they want to target. But how do you do that besides creating a very convincing PDF file? Well, there are different things in the PDF format that allow threat actors to do that. First of all, PDF files, by definition in the format, they can contain JavaScript. And well, that's, that's called for threat actors because they can uh, write a JavaScript um, that will execute as the PDF file is open. But that's not the only thing, because PDF readers have vulnerabilities like any other software. And as we mentioned, there are tons of PDF readers. So um, there are PDF files that can be tailored to exploit these vulnerabilities and execute code and so on. Um, next, we have links to malicious sites. Maybe that's the more basic way, but that's very common. So for example, PDF with fake captcha or coupons and play buttons, really endless options. And lastly, we have the embedded um, executables or scripts. We're going to see an example of that as well. PDF files, as I mentioned, they can contain different information in different streams and threat actors can use it to hide uh, some information over there. Jenna, do we have questions to the chat? Yeah, so one of the questions we have goes back a little bit. Um, we had somebody who said, who had a question about the, the title. So in that, the title of the PDF, what kind of suspicious info would you be looking for? In the title itself or in the header? So it sounds like the, the title itself, it doesn't matter. It's the header that's important. Yeah. And so in that header specifically, what do you look for in the header for suspicious info? So we're going to see it more in the examples, but um, as I mentioned, the producer can be very useful. Um, not sure about the title, maybe the author. Another very important thing is uh, maybe the versions 
but um, hopefully I will answer the question in the example section. And if not, uh, please uh, remind me about it. Great. Thank you. All right. So when we talked about PDF formats and we understand how redactors may use these uh, files. Now we as, uh, as, as defenders and responders, we need to understand how to handle these files. And one of the um, things that we have coped with is the fact that PDFs are really uh, common, they're really popular. We use them as individuals, uh, maybe at home, and we use them as organizations and we send them to other organizations. So uh, PDF are really everywhere. <laughs> so it will be really impossible to just analyze each and every PDF file. So first of all, we need to understand how to uh, maybe reduce the amount of files that we need to, uh, to work with. And once we did that, now we need to understand how to actually um, identify these PDF files, how to investigate them. And here we have two options. We have the dynamic analysis, meaning take the PDF file, throw it into a sandbox or a virtual machine and see what happens if uh, you see some communication or something uh, opens up and you didn't expect it to happen and so on. Uh, but while it can save us time, um, it's not always going to work because some PDF files will uh, start the malicious activity only in specific PDF readers or they will wait for a user to do something, to fill some information or click on things. So uh, we might get like a false positive sense of, uh, hey, this file is clean, but it's not really. And the other approach is a static analysis. So uh, use different tools to try and understand what the file contains, what it might do without actually running the file. And here, the cons is that it takes time and it requires experience. So we are stuck in the middle. But if you ask personally me, I would say do both. Try to first run it in a sandbox. Try to see what you can get from the file. And only then, if you feel that it's not enough or uh, the results are not good enough, only then you should uh, put in the time with the static analysis. But we're here to learn, so we're going to do uh, all of that. All right, so th that's a live demo. Uh, so we'll start with the examples. And as I do the examples, I will present the tools that I'm using. So all of the tools are either open source or uh, free. So the first tool is a PDF which will parse the PDF file. And based on the keywords that it looks for, we can get some information about the PDF file and understand if it's suspicious and where we should uh, investigate it and how. Um, what we see here, uh, the hashes, versions, uh, that's basically the information in, in the header. And we see one version, I will mention it uh, about the version in the next examples. And we see the familiar objects. So we see, we see the streams, objects with JavaScript, uh, open action, that means that something will happen as soon as the user will or the victim will open the PDF file. Embedded files, that's something that we mentioned as well. All right, so the first thing that I want to do now is investigate the, the JavaScript object. So I can start with object number four. For that, I will use another tool called PDF parser. That's a very powerful tool that can um, not only parse the PDF, but get the, the streams and the strings and the objects out of the PDF file, and I, I can work with them directly. So object number four, um, and I will take it from the example. All right, so we see the object. We're talking about object number four. We don't have a type, and we know it will reference object number three. And that's exactly what we see here. So I can go now and object number three. 
Another thing that I can do is use the F flag that will tell PDF parser to pass the, uh, this object through the filter, uh, as we mentioned before, because as you see, it was compressed with this, uh, with this flat decode. And another thing that I want to do is to dump the, the output of this object into some uh, sort of a file. All right, so what we see here, what we see here, I would um, start with analyzing this settings content MS. So what is that, first of all? Uh, it was introduced in Windows 10 and it allows the user to create a shortcut to Windows 10 settings page. Basically, it's an XML file that contains different path to various of Windows 10 settings. And the interesting thing about this settings MS is a property called deep link that takes a binary and arguments and executes it. Essentially allows attackers to run arbitrary code uh, and arbitrary PowerShell and event detection and whitelisting. So uh, we know that we're looking at MS, uh, this settings content MS. And now we need to understand a bit better uh, what actually tries to, to do. So if we go and check this version and we will try to, to find more information that we can uh, analyze more objects. So I see here the embedded file number one. And I suspect might suspect that this file will contain the XML uh, code that will be actually the shortcut that uh, the attackers are trying to execute. So once again, I can use a PDF parser. Right, so we extracted it and now I can open it in uh, VS Code or some other, I'll just show you. All right, so that's the XML file that will edit represent the, the shortcut, but what is interesting here is, as I mentioned, we see the deep link and it contains PowerShell. It will download uh, a file from this URL and save it into this path. So what we had here is a PDF file that contains uh, some sort of a Windows 10 feature, but abuses it. And as you saw before, we had a URL, we had a domain, so we can investigate further. So if, for example, this file I would see in my environment, I can take the URL and look for connections. So I will understand who is the threat actor behind this attack. And uh, if we inspect the, the, the domain, so for example, here I use Alien Vault, uh, and here we can see this IP or URL that was used and it's uh, linked to this threat doctor. So in this example, we use PDF and PDF parser, and that's, uh, I think, the, uh, the main open source tools that we're going to use, and uh, I'm going to show more tools. So the next example is a PDF file that was delivered along this email. The email, I translated it uh, using Google Translate uh, from uh, uh, German, because this specific attack targeted German-speaking people. And the email saying, hey, uh, you need to uh, fill in this tax report uh, for your Amazon uh, store. And this is the attached PDF file. Uh, fill in the information, and you will need to log into your uh, uh, Amazon account. And that, that's the PDF. That's what the PDF doing, but not only. 
So uh, once again, we will go and inspect the file. We will start with PDF, PDF as before. All right. So first of all, here we have two versions. So PDF files can have different versions. If I modify the PDF file, all the changes will be added to the bottom. And that's what we see here. And now what I want to do is to once again start and inspect the, the encoded object. Because it, as you see here, we have something as, sorry, a stream that is encoded and not only it's encoded, it contains JavaScript. So. All right, so I, I see we have uh, this blob of information that's a uh, JavaScript. Uh, as the PDF said, and what I did here is I just uh, moved it to the VS Code and uh, make, make it look better, uh, but it's the same thing. But what we can see here is that uh, this PDF file, this JavaScript, will create a form. We see the user and the password, email, and so on, and in the end, we see these two URLs. And what it says basically is once the user will click the button, the information, the credentials that he entered will be sent to this URL, which meant to look like an Amazon, but it's a fake site controlled by the threat actors. But one thing to mention here is that we did this process and Right, it didn't take us too much time, but we could have spent, sorry, we could have saved this time. Once again, I'm not, uh, I'm not a salesperson, so bear with me. I just want to show you more ways to, um, to analyze PDF files. So what I did is upload the PDF file to Intuzer Analyze, which is a platform for reuse, code reuse, string reuse, IOCs, and behavior. So we have all the information about a file. Uh, once you upload a file, it's executed in a sandbox and analyzed all over. And we can have information about uh, the malware that was executed and the networking connections and the files that were opened and so on. And as defenders and investigators, it can give us added value because we're looking for this information. We need uh, these pieces to hunt for other threats or similar threats and to detect them. So in this window, we have to detect and hunt. Um, and I want to focus on the networking. That's um, the, the URL that we saw. That's the domain where the credentials will be submitted once the user clicks the, the button. And in the behavior tab, we can see how this form would look like. So that's the form where the user would fill in his information, his credentials, and click submit, and the information will be uh, stored. All right, let's move to the next example. Okay, so um, once again, we start with, uh, with an analysis of the files. Uh, and I want to start from actually from this embedded file from uh, object number eight. Sometimes these tools can take a minute longer, uh, but I guess that's part of a demo. All Another thing about a PDF is that you can see the URIs and maybe comments 
some of the information here can be very useful. So pay attention when you, uh, when you run these tools. All right, so uh, this object was extracted uh, into file number three. And if I would run the file command, I will see that it's an RTF file. So RTF files, uh, if you want to know how to work with them, you can check out the previous session that I did about Office files. Um, but we're going to use another open source tool called RTF Opt to inspect the objects that are in this RTF file. And what we see here is that uh, the tool was able to detect that this RTF uh, file will try to exploit a very common uh, vulnerability, a very commonly exploited vulnerability in the equation editor. Um, so now we have two options. We can either start analyzing this RTF object, uh, try to extract it. Uh, we're probably going to have a shell code because that's mostly how this vulnerability will be exploited using a shell code. Um, and it will take some time. The other option is go to into the run analyze and check if we can get more um, information over there without putting the, the time and the effort into statically analyzing shell codes, which can be very time consuming. So once again, I uploaded the file to Intezer Analyze and we can see that it's malicious, but we already knew that. What we want to know is what exactly is going on in this file. So the classifications, sorry, the classification is the raccoon stealer. Okay. Uh, let's go to the behavior tab. We can see that indeed it was a PDF file, it was open, and then we see the word program because that's an RTF file. And over here, we see the equation editor. That's the program that is exploited. And if we go back to the genetic analysis now, what we can see here is the process tree, the process tree of the execution of followed by opening this PDF file. Um, and that saves us lots of time because instead of spending time on trying to analyzing a shell code and look for the malware uh, and so on, we have all of the information just by uploading the file. And another important note, you see the classification as raccoon stealer, but you might say, hey, I see here as world, what's going on? So the thing about Raccoon Stealer and Azeroth is that Azeroth was an um, information stealer, very uh, uh, popular. I mean, it attacked many victims and it's not longer maintained by the threat actor. And Raccoon Stealer is um, sort of a replacement of this information stealer. And what we saw this code reuse, uh, these both families, uh, they share code because they basically do the same thing. Uh, one is, uh, is the replacement for the other. So it makes total sense to see these connections, which make it, makes it really uh, more stronger, say, uh, this PDF file will drop an information stealer using an RTF file. All right, next example. Once again, uh, we see two versions and we'll start from object number five, the embedded file. Okay, so we see this, uh, this object con contains um, an embedded file reference to object number six. So let's check it out. This one reference object number seven. So we're going to check this one. And here again, we see a reference to another object, object eight. 
and we don't see here much. It looks like it contains some information. It wasn't um, printed. So we use Once again, file comments on the outputted um, file, and we see her in executable. So what we saw is a PDF file that contain, contains an embedded file, an embedded object, an embedded file, uh, one object references another, and we are following that. I wanted to show you how to identify uh, these references between objects. And in the end, uh, we see a dropped executable. Now, what we can do is either start to uh, reverse the, the executable file to understand what it is. We can uh, try to get the MD5 of this file. Maybe it was submitted um, to, to some sort of a virus total or another uh, platform where we can get more information about this malware. If it's something new, it will not be there and we'll need to spend more time. And what I want to show uh, is how you can save time. So uh, that's why I submitted the file to Intezer Analyze. I submitted the PDF file, not the executable, but the whole PDF. And what we see uh, is classification as this um, malware called SWORD. But as you see, it has the Metasploit and the shellcode tag. So, this malware is actually a vector associated with the Metasploit payload. So it's very common to see this malware that uses this payload to deploy a vector. And uh, really, I would say scary thing here is that a PDF file would be opened and uh, just as it's opened, a vector is installed on the system. All right. So we had four examples. I hope that I covered the most um, common ways in which PDF files are uh, exploited by threat actors. I used several open source tools. So we have the PDF parser and the PDF. There are other tools like uh, the PDF ID uh, and other tools by uh, Trader Stevens. And I show you, showed you in Tether Analyze and how it can be combined. Uh, with all the, the skills that we learned and how it can help you save time and enrich your um, threat hunting or incident response uh, process. Questions? Awesome. Thank you, Nicole. That was so much information. Uh, I'm collecting a couple of questions here and then I'm going to go through and so one of the things that I really want to start us off with is what you just went through is really, really great for analyzing individual PDFs deeper. But if you have a phishing, phishing pipeline full of hundreds of PDFs and other documents, how do you figure out which ones to dig in deeper like you just showed? As an analyst, like, is there automation? Are there tools? How can you sift through to figure out which ones to start digging in deeper? So uh, I think you need to build some kind of a pipeline or a funnel based on some uh, alerts or uh, detections. As I said, and uh, it's really not possible to analyze each and every file, but once you have detected something suspicious, you would need to uh, pipe it to something like Intezer Analyze, something that can do uh, at least the initial work for you. And from there, you can pick up and see if you need more information or uh, what else, what are the steps next? Yeah, and that was one of the questions we had earlier on was, you know, how can you distinguish if the document is malicious or not in terms of file appearance? So if you are just looking at that file appearance, what are some of the tells that might help you figure out if it's malicious? So that's what we saw with tools like the PDF because um, the yellow color, maybe I forgot to mention it, but yellow color says that, that that's something suspicious. You should start looking into this. And as I said, JavaScript is really part of PDF files. So not every PDF file that have JavaScript is malicious, uh, but that's something to check. And I saw a question about the Remnux machine. So um, I really like it because it's Linux based 
and uh, it has all the tools, not only for PDF files, but it really comes with a bunch of different tools. I just use the container for Remux, and I think it's really powerful. Perfect. And another question that we had is, um, how do you submit if there's multiple, if the payload is multiple files, like a PS command is referencing other files? Sorry, I didn't get the question. <laughs> Yeah, here, let me let me drop this one in the chat right here so you can see it right up front. I grabbed it from earlier. So the question is, how do you submit if the payload is multiple files, like a power, I think that's PowerShell command referencing yeah. other files. Oh, so how do you submit uh, a server? You can submit a zip file. Uh, maybe it's not to date that uh, straightforward, but we do have different integrations uh, that you can use. Uh, and I think it will solve this issue. But uh, straight from the GUI, you can just drop the file and submit it. Uh, and if we will see that it's not uh, producing the right results, so uh, our support uh, will uh, help for sure. Great. And one of the one of the questions is a pretty easy one. Uh, somebody asked, can we get the PDF samples for our own analysis? Yes. So I shared them in, in the chat. Uh, I can share them again, but uh, you all will get the slides with the links to the to the samples. So yeah, they're all uh, available. Awesome, and I liked this question here too. You know, really looking at what are the best sandboxes. You know, what are you? What are the sandboxes you use? I mean, you're you obviously have access to the enterprise tools uh, here at Interpri uh, Interzer, so you've got all those. But what are the sandboxing tools that you're using? So yeah, I saw this uh, conversation here about Flare and about Remnix. So uh, for me, Remnix is like for, uh, first of all, for Linux, yes, but for the static analysis, I really like it. Uh, Flare, I really like it too. Mm. Uh, to be honest, I switched to uh, a new Mac with M1, so I have quite uh, trouble with virtual machines now. Uh, so I don't know, I use Cape because, um, if I need something, I'll run it through Intezer and then uh, I, I see the Cape report. Um, or Flare VM if I just need a standalone virtual machine to debug something. And then I see another question here. Um, isn't this handled by a classic antivirus? Is Intezer an antivirus? The, uh, just like PDF, PDF analysis and figuring out is it malicious or not? Where do, so, how do, how does a, in a, in a classic antivirus, you know, solve that or not solve yeah. that? Yeah, so classic antiviruses uh, most likely will be based on signatures and threat actors always look for ways to bypass uh, the signatures. So they will find new ways like we saw with the MS settings for Windows 10. Uh, and uh, as we saw with the decoded or the, sorry, with the compressed streams, which will make it harder to detect the suspicious or the malicious parts. So um, while antivir antiviruses can be uh, useful, but they will not catch each and every PDF file that is malicious. Uh, yeah, so it sounds like those are going to catch the known signatures, but if there's, you know, PDFs that they've tampered with, that they've changed, they've uh, known enough to evade those signatures, it'll still get through. Yes, exactly. Um, let's see, do we have any other questions that I missed? The, how does, so one of the things that I know can come up, how does this, in, how does this, uh, like building a phishing pipeline work with a SOAR. Is this, can that be a source of like getting these malicious PDFs and the alerts that bring these to your attention? Yeah, so we can like build uh, a full pipeline. You get the alerts or the suspicious files uh, from one source, pipe it into into the analyze or whatever you're using, and then uh, continue the flow with that. So I would say integrate as much automation uh, as you can, because uh, while it might look like lots of effort and lots of work, 
it will worth the time because uh, there are really thousands of files, thousands of alerts. Alert fatigue is a real thing. And uh, it takes time right now to even detect that an incident is happening. So uh, we need to reduce it as much as possible this time it takes us to handle an incident. Perfect. And the last question is really about the first example. Um, is there the C2 IP on Intiser for that first example? Do we have that that we can share? We have it in the URL analysis. In the URL analysis, sorry. Yeah, I'm trying to look in the slides to see if I can't pull it up. The um for the the question is not really a question it's a statement. For the first example, I can't see the C2 IP on Intiser. And oh, there's the. Oh, I see someone uh, unanswered. <laughs> oh, he put the uh the link in there. It's coming back. <laughs> no, that's not. Oh, me? Sorry. <laughs> All right, just a second. Right, I didn't put the link. Uh, but uh, we can we can drop that into the slides when we share them around. Uh, so uh, that way yeah, here I think uh, someone shared it. I will share it again. And uh, someone asked about the IP address. So uh, right, we don't see it in the IOCs, but we do see it in the networking, I think. When the, these uh, IP addresses or domains are uh, relatively old or not active anymore, so uh, we might not get the full image or the full result because um, once the PDF is executed in the sandbox and it can't reach the IP or the domain, we'll not get the payload. So um, th that's one of the things about PDF files and Office files as well. If the domain is oh, dead, we don't. That's tricky. We can't do anything. Yeah, they turned it off. Okay. Got it. Well, I definitely learned a lot. Some of it goes over my head, but I learn so much more every time that I get to talk to you, Nicole. Uh, thank you, everyone, for showing up and for your great questions, for uh, really learning and figuring out, you know, how can we make sure that our organization stays safer from various threats, including from malicious PDFs. Thank Thanks, you so everyone, much for attending. Yeah. Bye. Bye.